The center of Chicago's skyline, a repeat record setter, and a longtime world's tallest building, whether you know it by the name Sears or Willis, the Modernist Tower at 233 South Wacker Drive in downtown Chicago is an architectural icon and a fascinating example of modern real estate development. Let's go back to 1969. Chicago is a major urban hub, and local company Sears, Roebuck & Co. has become the world's largest retailer. The booming corporation decides to take its thousands of Chicago employees from its outdated HQ and move them all into one central location downtown. The company selected a site in the Loop, a once bustling district that had, in the 60s, been impacted by Chicago's increasing suburbanization. Sears' lawyers cobbled together a two-block assemblage to create the large site they needed, and enlisted structural engineer Fazler Khan and architect Bruce Graham from Skidmore Owens & Merrill to design the structure. Now, Sears had projected its office needs all the way down to the number of desks they'd need in 2003, 34 years in the future. And as they started to design, those predictions kept going up, changing the plans to require an 108-floor structure, which would surpass New York's World Trade Centers. Sears also consulted a design firm to create optimal floor plans that indicated where every department should be in relation to every other. Engineer Khan stepped in, creating a design where nine square tubes are joined together to create a structure that was both tailored to Sears' needs and extremely economically efficient. The tubes tapered back after the 50th, 66th and 89th floors, creating smaller plans which would be rentable spaces before the company grew into the whole building. The plan worked beautifully. In fact, many super talls today still use Khan's tube system, and it saved Sears about $10 million in steel cost. The structure was completed in May of 1973, topping out at 1,450 feet, which was as high as the Federal Aviation Administration would allow, and making it the tallest building in the world. So construction was a success, but that didn't mean the tower was a hit. In the 1980s, Chicago saw an office inventory surplus, and Sears struggled to lease all that space it intended to grow into. It's been reported that the building saw as high as 50% vacancy. In 1984, the company attempted a lower floors renovation to attract more foot traffic, leading to the addition of the much ridiculed lunchbox entrance. It didn't really work, and in the 80s, Sears shopped the building around to no avail. Worse, the retailer was reaching its own peak. Competition from companies like Kmart and newcomer Walmart put a dent in its revenues. By 1992, Sears was moving out of its own building, and the tower started to change hands. In 1994, Sears negotiated with its lenders, AEW and MetLife, who relieved it of its liability on its $850 million loan. In 1997, Canadian company Trizec Properties acquired AEW's stake and made a few somewhat successful attempts to attract new tenants. But in 2001, following the 9-11 attacks, major tenants Goldman Sachs and Merrill Lynch announced plans to vacate. And a little over a year later, in 2003, Trizec sold its holdings to MetLife. In 2004, MetLife sold the building to a group of investors, including Joseph Moynian, Joseph Chitrit, Lloyd Goldman, Joseph Kerr, Jeffrey File, and American Landmark Properties for $840 million, which at the time was the largest sale in Chicago's history. The building suffered again after arrests were made in 2006 of seven men who were reportedly planning to attack the tower. Though the attempt was never made, Ernst & Young, its largest tenant, moved out. But the tower soldiered on and continued to be known as the Sears Tower, even though the official naming rights had expired and Sears itself was bought by Kmart. That is until 2009, when the owners enticed London-based insurance company Willis Group Holding into a lease by dangling the naming rights carrot. In July of that year, it officially became the Willis Tower. But many locals have never adjusted to the change, continuing to call it the Sears Tower and populating a 100,000 person strong Facebook group called People Against the Sears Tower Name Change. In 2020, rival Aeon bought out Willis and with it snagged the right to name the tower for the low, low price of $1 million per year. So in theory, the building could become the Aeon Tower, though Chicago already has an Aeon Center, or after its largest tenant since 2012, the United Airlines Tower, or new owner Blackstone, which purchased the building for $1.3 billion in 2015 and has since started on a $500 million facelift, could pick something else entirely. Whatever the name, the Willis Tower still makes a major mark on Chicago's skyline, with its striking black facade, enormous height, and tumultuous history. Stay tuned on TheRealDeal.com for more.